My name is Brian Kwong, also known as the Salesforce Wizard due to my choice of head apparel during Salesforce events. The previous episode provided a general overview of the Lightning Flow Builder. This series assumes you're familiar with the concepts reviewed in the previous videos. So if you haven't seen them, check out the playlist to get caught up. This episode is all about screens and flow. There are two types of flows. There are auto launch flows. Auto launch flows are flows that can be launched when a record is created or edited, process builder, used through the API or through Apex code. Then there are flows that a user can directly interact with. These are aptly named screen flows. Most tutorials and walkthroughs you will see use screen flows. The screen element is what makes flows unique as an automation tool in Salesforce. Prior to Flow, the best we had for users to directly interact with the automation was with Visual Force, and that required code. The Lightning Flow Builder gives us a lot of flexibility with our screens, including being able to put Lightning components on the screen itself. This gives us the capability to make our flows look and do almost anything we want. The screen element can only be used in screen flows. The original screen element was fairly restrictive. You could only use some of the very basic input and output components. With the Lightning Flow Builder, in addition to the standard input and output components, we can also use Lightning components. There are some standard Lightning components that are immediately available. You can get more Lightning components on the App Exchange. You can also develop your own Lightning components, but that's another show. As we stated, there's two types of flows. Salesforce requires you to decide which type of flow you're going to build right at the get-go when you're creating a new flow. We have auto launch flow, which you should use if you're going to be calling this flow from Process Builder, from the API, from Apex, or potentially from another flow. And then we have screen flows. It's really important that if you want your user to be able to interact with your flow, that you select screen flow. Okay, let's go ahead and drag our screen element right away over onto our canvas. Now this is broken down into three different sections. We have our list of screen components off to the, to the side here. This is a list of everything we can put on a screen for our users to interact with. Smack in the middle is essentially our preview of what the screen will look like. It works very similarly to the canvas and palette system that we have in our regular Lightning Flow Builder. The last section this is the property section. Now, the property sections changes as you are modifying your screen element. At the very beginning, this starts with screen properties, essentially how the screen itself is gonna be managed. But as you move through and change or select the different screen components on our canvas here, the screen properties is gonna change so you can modify the properties of each of those components. Now let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at these individual items a little bit closely and do some examples. Let's start by taking a look at the screen property section. So the very first thing is the label. This is effectively what the screen is going to be called if you let your end users see it is. The next one is the API name. Now the API name is really for your purposes. The key part of the API name is you can only have one item with this same API name throughout your entirety of your flow. The last item in this top section is the description field. This is really for your use again to tell you, hey, this flow does this, or this screen does this. Below this are things that basically that let you control what shows up or does not show up on the screen. The very first thing is being able to show or hide the footer. If you allow the header to display, you'll have your screen name, your label, at the very top of the screen. If you have your footer displayed, it's gonna display your navigation. Now, personally, I usually don't show my header simply because of the fact I don't like having my screen labels display on the screen themselves when users are using them. Personally, I like hiding it so the user doesn't see what the label is simply because of the fact that it gives me more control over handling it. The next section is the navigation. The navigation is important because it lets you decide what buttons will show up. At the default, we have next or finish, previous or pause. The next or finish is what is used to make the flow continue forward, moves the flow on or says, hey, this flow is done, and it does all remaining actions like creating records and so forth. 
the previous allows you to go back in your flow process. Now this could be a big deal because if you allow users to go back and forth, you have to make sure that your flow is built in a manner to handle that. There are certain circumstances, if you're going through and saying, you know, I'm, I'm gonna create records and delete records and things like that, you may not want the user to go back and forth. The next item is the pause and the confirmation message for the pause. You can set it so your flow will be paused. It allows the user to stop this particular flow, go do something else and come back to it. Or in some circumstances, hand this flow off to another user for them to complete it. And then the confirmation message is there mainly to let you provide, well, just that, a confirmation that the flow has been paused. So I like to remove previous and if I'm not going to use it the pause now if you don't have a pause item in your flow having the checkbox there is not the end of the world but I like to keep it off just for keeping it things clean the last section is providing help this is help for the screen itself and that's pretty much the minimum thing for setting up the screen properly now, to be quite honest, I don't use the help text for the screens very often. I usually prefer to do something like a display text, but everyone to their own. Let's take a look at some of the components. Now, the big thing is you're going to see some components here with the lightning icon that indicates that this is a lightning component. Now, everything you have on the screen right now are lightning components that are provided by Salesforce. Anyone who has flow in their Salesforce will have these lightning components. Now you can get more lightning components by either developing your own or you can go to the app exchange and there's a nice friendly link at the bottom of the screen components for you to go do just that. We're gonna look at pretty much the simple uh, screen components to begin with, mainly because it'll give you the better idea of how these things are used. And the most simplest is doing a text. Just like we do when we're in the flow builder itself, it's everything is drag and drop. So I'm gonna drag the text component over to the screen. This automatically selects it and you can see our screen properties has now changed. Now this is the label in the API name for the input text field. Now this is important. This is input, not for output. So the label here is whatever you wanna call it to help guide it. Now for, it does not have to be a field name. It could be a question. It could be comments. It could be anything you want. The API name does not have to match up. It will automatically fill in for you. Unless you have the reason to change the API name, I usually just let it do its own thing. We also have the option to set this to be required. And you can see as I add that checkbox, it puts a little red asterisk over here in our preview. We can also set the default value. Now the default value can be anything from free text to referencing an S object variable or another variable, which we talked about really briefly in the overview and we'll get into more in depth as we go through. We can also put in some uh, validation to kind of make sure that, hey, no, you have to do certain things. I don't use this too often within Flow, but it is possible by putting in an error message and then a formula below that. And then we have help, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's providing help text. That's the simplest screen element you have. All the other ones work very similarly, where we're gonna get a bit of label and then we're gonna provide some information about what this is gonna do. For example, we could do a display text. This is how I like to do instructions, is simply putting a display text that says, hey, come and do this. Obviously not that literal. Uh, and that's all you have to do. It can make it really, really nice and easy to provide some guidance without having to do pop-up help text or anything like that. There are some of these components that you have to provide more information on. For example, some of the classic ones are things like pick lists, radio buttons, um, items like that. And the key thing here is you have to tell the system what it should be. In the case of things like radio buttons and pick lists or multi-select lists, you have to say what the values are. And there's a few ways that you could do this, but they all involve choices. You can create your own choice, which is exactly what you think of, think it is. It can be based off of some free text that you simply type in, or it can be based on a pick list field, or it could be based on a set of records. Um, most of the time, the choices that I'm using are gonna be things like, hey, yes, no, or uh, something that's after an actual pick list value. And you have 
the a capability to go through and say, hey, this is the name or in the label of my choice. API name is important here because that's how you're going to reference it further in the flow. You can say what the data type is, and then you can say, hey, what's the value of this? So I can simply go through and say yes, or I can set the value to something else. Um, and that's how you can create a choice. Now, once you have your choices created, you do need to select them within here. And you can have multiple choices. So right now we have a single pick list for yes. I can come through here and I can add another choice to my list that's simply no. And make sure that this is captured as text and text. And then I need to select it. So now I have an actual drop down here that allow me to say yes or no. But again, this can line up with a pick list field. This is essentially how your screen components work. It's going to have you drag and drop your screen components, and then you have to define what that component is going to be doing, what the values are, what the text is, and so forth. For lightning components, it's a little bit special, simply because of the fact that it can be very simple to very complex to what that lightning component is going to do. And each one's going to be something different, but they follow the same type of idea. So if I drag and drop the address lightning component here, you can see we have a whole bunch of different things. And this is for things to say, hey, what do you want to show up? We start with a bunch of things that are like, what is the value of the city? What are the potential country options and so forth? And then we have to say, well, where do we want to store the results of that? So effectively, where do you want the user to be able to come in and if they select a city or select a state, where do you want that value to be stored? If you're dealing with non-lightning component screen items, typically the value that is stored is the screen component itself. And we'll take a look at that in the next video when we talk about using decisions within our flow. So that's an overview of what the screen element can do. You have a set of screen components you can select from by simply dragging and dropping them onto our screen canvas. We set the properties for both the screen as well as for each component that we're putting through. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and click done in the bottom right hand corner. If you forget something, it's going to throw an error and it will tell you that the components that you forgot something are invalid. So you can see I actually have two. One of them is because I haven't filled in the API name. I'm not going to use address. I'm going to go ahead and delete that particular component. And for here, I also did the same thing. I neglected to put in a particular value. So I'm going to just go ahead and put in the word pick list so we can go ahead and click done and be done, saved. Once your element is on the screen, you can connect it using the arrows and on your merry way you go. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to get a cool shirt like this, you can go to thewizardnews.com slash shop and you'll find shirts like this as well as stickers, coffee mugs, notepads, and even pillows. You can also support us by shopping through our Amazon affiliate link, which you'll find in the description as well as to thewizardnews.com under the support me menu. To get more videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon to get the notifications of all the future videos. Remember, the magic is out there. It's yours for the taking.